New this morning, we are waiting to learn more about a police investigation in St. Paul. Around 2 this morning, police closed off the area of East 7th Street in Payne and put up crime scene tape. A photographer on the scene says a body was lying in the street. Then at a different scene at 3rd and Maria, police had an SUV pulled over with damage to the front. We are waiting to hear if the two scenes are connected. In Texas, police are still trying to figure out why a man opened fire in a church, killing more than two dozen people. Now seems a clerical mistake allowed the shooter to buy guns legally. No questions asked. There was no prohibitive information in the systems that we checked that say that he could not have purchased that firearm. That should not have been the case. The Air Force admitted yesterday it failed to alert the FBI about the shooter's criminal history, so his name was not in their database. The gunman had been court-martialed and convicted on two charges of domestic assault. Police say the shooter fired off at least 450 rounds before being confronted by a neighbor who heard the shots, grabbed his own gun, and ran barefoot to the church. That neighbor was Stephen Williford. And every time I heard a shot, I knew that that probably represented a life. I was scared to death. Police say Williford shot the gunman twice, once in the leg, once in the torso. He then took off in a car. That gunman crashed and was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to his head. Police believe the shooting was not motivated by race or religion, but rather stemmed from some sort of domestic dispute. President Donald Trump is meeting with the president of South Korea right now as he starts a two-day visit in that country. Before traveling to Seoul today, the president stopped at Camp Humphreys, where the thousands of U.S. troops are stationed. From there, President Trump and First Lady Melania had a ceremonial entrance at the Blue House, the executive residence of the South Korean president. North Korea's situation will be a discussion that we will have front and center. And hopefully something's going to be very successfully worked out on that. While in Japan, the president refused to rule out a military strike in response to the North's nuclear tests and provocations. Trade is also a big topic that they are talking about today. It is election day and the polls open at 7 o'clock this morning across the metro. Voters in both Minneapolis and St. Paul will vote for mayor. But the results might take a little bit of time to come in. Both cities use ranked choice voting. You have to kind of count through once and then again. St. Paul counting ballots by hand. So they say it could be until Saturday night before we know the winner. Uh, you know, it, it, would be, it would be best if we were done completely on election night. But, you know, it's the, it's the system we have, and we'll, uh, we'll do it for as long as the voters want us to do that. In Minneapolis, they hope to be finished tabulating results by the end of business day tomorrow. We'll keep a close eye on those results and also the outcomes of a number of important school referendums Many may be going on in your community. A hunter's life was likely saved thanks to the help of a drone. 84-year-old guy disappeared Saturday in a wooded area near the town of Byron. First responders started searching the area. You know, they like the normal way, go looking for the guy, but they didn't have much luck until Rochester police used a new type of technology. John Lordson shows us how they found that missing hunter. He had some health issues. He has fallen before, so they were concerned that he had fallen and was, was down and, and really couldn't be seen. The 84-year-old had left his home around 3.45 Saturday afternoon, and when he didn't return hours later, his wife became concerned. His truck was found stuck in the mud, and it became clear he had wandered off looking for help. By the time the search began, it was dark out, and weather conditions added to an already difficult situation. It kept the state patrol from flying their search helicopter. We were concerned that within a couple hours it was going to turn from a rescue into a recovery. So you had all this area here to search. So Dave Thompson and Ray Caban decided to use some technology of their own. Nine months ago, Rochester police got a drone with infrared capabilities. Unlike helicopters, it can fly in low visibility. Basically picks up any heat deviations, for any degrees that's different from whatever else is around it. After searching for about an hour and after several false alarms, Officer Caban got a hit. I mean, you can see someone laying on the ground with another two responders. He actually was, you know, down on the ground, kind of in the wet, swampy area, so he was partially submerged. The hunter had become stuck in a foot of mud and was semi-conscious when first responders got to him. He was rushed to the hospital 
and is expected to make a full recovery. Stoked, yeah, we were, we were totally thrilled that the, the way it ended up. John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Police believe without that drone, they probably wouldn't have found the guy on Saturday night. They say right after they got that drone initially, it helped them solve an arson case. They were able to track down suspects that were hiding. So just another tool to use up in the sky. But great that they found this man yeah. know, who, uh, you know, rough, know. rough hunt, sad. I, I I mean, you just think about how, how remarkable drones have been. Just recently, we've heard of them finding children in cornfields. Yep, sure. So we are very lucky to have this technology, I'd say.